From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. Now, here's your host and bud tender, Gary Johnston. And thank you once again for coming back to the Cannabis Podcast. This is episode number 24, and it is rife with information about retail, specifically retail here in the Okanagan, because that glacial pace has increased ever so slightly. There was a license released to Vernon, to a spirit leaf outlet in Vernon. We decided to take a trip up there, did a road trip, and visited that spirit leaf location. Not only did we visit it, We picked up some product for Cultivar Corner, and we did an interview with one of the owners, Sarah. That's coming up on episode number 24. Plus, I'm also going to talk a little bit about a petition that's going around right now. In fact, as you listen to this podcast, if you're picking this up on the day that it was released, you have one more day to sign this petition. This is a petition with the hashtag Cannabis Seeds, talking about making cannabis seeds more legal and more accessible so that all of us can grow our four cannabis plants. That's coming up. Plus, the last thing I want to talk about today is a re-education of cannabis. Let's go back to the basics. And what I'm referring to there is I was contacted by my listener, Organic Leafy Greens, a little while ago complaining about the Saskatchewan, or not the Saskatchewan, the Quebec government's website. And his concern was that we couldn't believe them because they were talking about the three types of cannabis. Well, today we're going to talk about the three types of cannabis. All that and more is coming up on episode 24 of the Cannabis Podcast. And now I want to talk about a petition that I was first made aware of from a tweet by a Twitter account called Magic Beans, Dean JC420. And the petition is asking to reclassify cannabis seeds from Schedule 1 and remove restrictions towards the sale of seeds, which in fact, would allow all Canadians equal access to viable cannabis seeds to produce their own cannabis. Remember those four plants that we are all allowed to grow? Except for Manitoba and Quebec, of course. But here in BC, I've got my four plants growing. And there's a move afoot to change the classification of cannabis seeds. If you would like to sign the petition, I've included the link to it back on CannabisPodcast.com. And just a word of warning, you only have one day. The, it is going through until the 21st of July, I believe, is the last day that we can sign the petition. So hey, being as this is being released on the 20th of July, you've got one more day if you want to add your name to the list of signatures to change the reclassification of cannabis seeds from Schedule 1 and remove the restrictions towards the sale of seeds. Check out the link for more details. From the cannabis-infused studio in the clouds, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Yesterday, I decided to take a little drive up to one of the new retail outlets, which is about 40 kilometers north of where I'm located, up in Vernon. Beautiful drive along Okanagan Lake and Kalamalka Lake. And I arrived at a beautiful little store. And I had the pleasure of meeting Sarah, one of the co-owners of Spirit Leaf in Vernon. And I'd now like to welcome Sarah to the Cannabis Podcast. Sarah, welcome. Hey, Gary. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. I was very impressed with your store yesterday. You must be pretty excited to have it open. Yes, we're so proud to finally be open. I bet. And I I guess that's one of the places that I wanted to start, Sarah. So how long have you been working on this process to get this store up and running? We submitted our application in August of 2018. Wow. (laughs) So almost (laughs) exactly a a year. Yeah. And as you went down that path, Sarah, what were some some of the real challenges that you faced in that last year that you've been working on this? Um, I think the biggest challenge was just being in the dark about when the application would move forward and when we were able to open. Um, Yeah, just every day was one day longer, one day more paying the bills, one more day waiting. And that must have been incredibly frustrating, just thinking about you and and all those that are sitting there with stores waiting to open. And as you say, you've got to be paying rent. How did you manage to survive that, that time period? So we did work our regular jobs up until the day before we opened. So um, I, yeah, Carson is a plumber um, and I took a temporary role here in Vernon for the last six, seven months. So, yeah. Oh, excellent. And, and why did you choose to do to open up a cannabis store and make it part of the Spiritly franchise? What was the rationale there? 
Uh, the rationale behind the Spirit Leaf franchise was that right away we needed, we needed help. If we were going to do this, we could not do it on our own. We had no idea about the IT system needed to be compliant or the application process or construction design. So they really helped us with all of those areas. Uh, that makes total sense because, as you say, coming into it as an independent, that would have been a lot more work for you. So they kind of smoothed the process for you. That's right. So I'm I'm curious. I want I want to step back, Sarah, back when you and your husband first started thinking about this, and and we knew that cannabis was going to be legalized. What was the magic moment? What was the the, the time that you decided that this was what you wanted to do, and why? Well, it was a very dark and cold New Year's Day in Alberta. And we were very cold and we wanted a change of pace. And we had been renovating a house. Um, so we were just getting ready to put it on the market. And we thought, what better timing than to just throw it all up in the air now and try something completely new. And you certainly accomplished that because that would be completely new for you. <laughs> yep. We sold the house. I listed it on a Monday and I had an offer by Friday afternoon. And then we said, uh, we want to move away from Alberta. It's too cold. It's you know, we've lived up in Fort McMurray and then we were down in Cochrane and we we're like, it's just too cold here. Let's move to the Okanagan. So Spirit Leaf was more than willing to help us uh, find a location out here and move our franchise agreement to the Okanagan. Nice. What you have done is, is certainly not a frivolous action. It's obviously taken some time, some investment. Was there any point in the last uh, 11 months where you kind of reconsidered whether or not you should be doing this? I think that went through our minds every day. Same with why we should continue to move forward. We had the conversation almost daily about, is it worth it? Will it be worth it in the end? You know, is it small time or small term pain for long term gain? Yeah. So we had to weigh those options almost every day and uh, yeah, give ourselves a little pep talk every day. And we did decide every day to keep moving forward. And here we are now. Well, congratulations. I'm, I'm certainly glad you did. Thank you. And what has been your biggest satisfaction since the store has opened? I think just seeing our customers walk through the door every day, you know, the whole idea of this was just a business uh, model through the last year. And now we are actually seeing customers. We're seeing repeat customers. We're seeing them leave with smiles on their faces. They come back asking for more, something different. They're engaging with us more. You know, we have friends now outside of the store who are customers and we've only been open two weeks. Nice. Nice. And, and, and to put this into a personal perspective, do you and your husband uh, consume cannabis? We do, yes. Yeah. I think it helps. And it, this is one of those businesses that I think you have to have that, that personal involvement to really care about what you do. And, and you certainly are giving me that impression, Sarah. Yes, exactly. So we have been doing a lot of uh, research and development lately. Um, it's been quite interesting because I'm pretty used to, you know, home homebrew, what I call homebrew or homegrown. Yeah. Carson's mom does a wonderful job at growing. So we're often gifted large packages. So oh, nice. um, it was it's very interesting to expand my like, you know, cannabis palette almost and to try different, try different strains and get into the oils and the capsules and just try something different. Yeah, absolutely. And I noticed I, I was looking at your, your site on Leafly where you have your menu displayed. And yes. uh, as is typical with most of the stores that are opening, there are those who are getting the complaints from those back in the, back in the day when they used to be able to get an ounce for a hundred bucks from their grower or from their, <laughs> from their dealer. And they're complaining about the price. How, what's your experience with pricing? How, how, what's your biggest challenge with pricing right now? Well, I think um, we're always going to hear those complaints because you can still go down the street. This is BC. There's lots of home growers. Um, there's lots of great growers in this community. And you can go down the street still and get an ounce for a hundred bucks. And that's fine if you want to go that route. Um, but we have some great customers who really want high quality products and who are willing to pay um, a little bit extra for that, um, knowing that it's a safe product, that it's been tested and you're getting exactly what you pay for. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm curious as well, Sarah, about the mix of, of your customers. What, what kind of demographics we've got? Are you seeing basically everybody from 19 to 90? Yep, exactly. You got it. 19 to 90 is our preferred customer base. And definitely um, some people coming back into smoking cannabis or consuming cannabis in any way. Um, now that it's legal, now that it's safe and tested, they are really coming back to it. So a lot of previous smokers that used to smoke in high school or after that, um, you know, now that they're in their 50s and 60s, they're getting back into it. Yeah, and, and that, that must be so cool for you to be able to participate and, and, and see their excitement along the way. Yes, they're, as soon as they come in, they just light up. They're like, I haven't done this in years and I can't wait to try it again. Yeah, and I can see the smile on their face as they're saying those words <laughs> to you. 
Yeah, that is so cool. So when you have somebody who's come into your store, and, and let's say it's somebody that has not experienced cannabis at all, what, what kind of guidance are you giving them to, to help, their, help them enjoy their first experience? We try to um, gauge on where they're at with their consumption method first. If they're, you know, if they just consume it by smoking a joint or using a pipe or if they're interested in the oils um, to see how they want to consume it. And then that guides us towards dried flour or um, if they want convenience or they don't like rolling, we can go the pre-roll route. And then, of course, dollar value. Some of them just shop by, I have $20, what can you give me? So we kind of start the process there and then we build from there. Excellent. And do, do you have an, an experience that you've had since the store has been opened that, that really sticks in your mind as somebody that you've helped along the way and, and their response was just so appreciative? Yes, we had a mom come in with her son who was over 19, um, just a bit over 19. And she came in and she introduced him to us. And she's like, I just want you to know that I approve of him um, using cannabis and I want him to use it safely. And he has his own money and he has his own job and here's his ID. And I want you guys to, I want him to get to know you and I want you to give him safe products. And if he's going to do it, I want him to come here to do it. Um, so that really stuck out to me that she also purchased cannabis for herself. Um, she knew what she wanted, but to introduce him to a legal market was very impressive that he didn't have to go, you know, down dark alleys or whatever to get it that he can come and he's been a repeat customer. And I really appreciated that she came in and did that. And yeah, she was very happy with the service and that he had a great place to go. That is so cool. Those are the kind of stories that I love hearing about in Canada since legalization, where we, we had those multi-generational experiences. That's a great story, Sarah. Thank you for sharing that one. Yeah, you're welcome. What has been your biggest disappointment as, as you've headed down this path? You, you've, you've been looking at this for you know, over a year now. And you, you've expressed the fact that, you know, you had your days where you wondered whether you're still going to go on. You have gone on. If there was one thing that you could have removed from the equation that would have helped you along the way, what would that be? Um, the packaging. <laughs> ah. You know, the packaging of all of these products is just ridiculous, but that's what the LPs were given. So I think if we could start over, I think we'd have some great input on how they package the products and how we received it. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Packaging has been an issue <laughs> right from the beginning. And, and as, as uh, I purchased some product when I was at Sarah's store yesterday, and this is the first time I came across this packaging with the where I had the one gram in the little plastic plastic case that it would well, easily hold probably four or five cramps in there. And and to <laughs> your point, that's that's one of the huge issues we have. And and I guess the point that you want to make sure that people understand is that the retailers are not choosing the packaging. Everything is coming to you as is, right? That's right. It's the licensed producers who packaged it that way. And um, yeah, and you can see that there's already some of them evolving into compostable packaging or we have recycling program now on site. Um, so it is getting better, but I wish if we could have gone back that we could have done something. So out of the gate, we were all set up for success with the packaging complaints. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't that be nice? Because the packaging is, we've got an. I mean, we already have an issue with plastic in our world, and the the cannabis industry since legalization has just added a ton more of those woos. So appreciate that. If the provincial or federal governments could do one thing that would have made your role easier, is there anything that you can think of in that regard, Sarah? Well, I guess just the application process is so time consuming, but at the same time, we do appreciate that they are vetting people properly. So I guess if they could kind of speed that up for those who were, um, you know, through the initial intake process, if they could have done some vetting then instead of waiting until further on in the process to do it. Yeah, that would certainly help. And I, and I see that uh, you are going to have some competition soon. Another license has been released for Vernon. So yes. there's now two in Vernon. We, of course, still have none in Kelowna, which is another discussion all, all <laughs> at all. It's, it's astounding to me how slow the provincial government has been at releasing those licenses. Do you have any insight as, into any of their process, why it's taking so long? I think just the vetting process. And we do appreciate that they are doing that, but they are looking at, you know, all bank transactions for the last, you know, five something years. They're looking at your full corporate structure of whatever company you've developed for to do this, to obtain the license and all your partners within that. Um, you know, we had been vetted, Spirit Leaf had to be vetted as well as Carson and myself. So it takes a long time. So the more uh, layers you add to your organizational structure, the more layers or the longer it's going to take to vet those layers. Okay. Excellent. 
Do you have any advice for anybody who is considering uh, doing the same thing, opening a cannabis store anywhere across the country? What, what might help them? <laughs> Just be patient and make sure you have all of your paperwork in order. That's pretty key, isn't it? The paperwork. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Excellent. That will cause major delays if you do not even have um, some of the required documents in order. It will delay your process even further. Okay. Well, I appreciate the time that you've taken with me, Sarah. And, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to hit you with some of my hot seat questions that I like to ask most of the guests that appear on my show. Uh, what's your favorite strain? Ooh, I've tried so many right now. I <laughs> think it's the uh, Charlie's Angel. It's an Indica. Okay. Any particular properties of that that you like? It was very effective as an Indica. <laughs> ah, nice. Nice. Gave you that body relaxation and Exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, excellent. Do you prefer joints or do you vaporize? Uh, joints, but we just purchased a vaporizer yesterday, so I'm going to start. I'm going to try it. Ah, you will become a fan. I think I, yeah. have, I have been a vaporizer <laughs> user for many, many years, and uh, it is definitely my preferred way of doing it. What, when you uh, have uh, had a bit of a talk, what's your favorite munchie? Hmm, interesting. I usually use it um, before bed, so I don't often get the munchies because I'm already sleeping. Nice. But but normally, I'm a big uh, chocolate fan. Ah, okay. So anything chocolate yeah. would do it for you. Yeah, super dark chocolate. <laughs> super dark. Okay. I love the specificity. <laughs> and uh, do yeah. you prefer edibles or flour? Um, well, I'm just going to get into the soft gels here probably this week. I'm going to trial them. Okay. So edibles for convenience. Yeah. But they kind of sneak up on you, so you have to be careful. <laughs> they absolutely do. We've we've talked about yeah. that before <laughs> on the show. Edibles can have a real surprise for you when you're not when you're not mm -hmm. expecting it. And, and my last question kind of refers to retail and the different terminology we find across the country. I'm curious in relation to your customers coming in, if you have anybody coming in with it has an odd expression for 3.5 grams or what you and I would probably call an eighth. Yeah, the half quarter. There it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. And, it's and, pretty funny. On day one, somebody hit me with that and I was completely confused. <laughs> and then you figured out that it was somebody from Ontario or East. And that's yes, the term but I'm they from use. Ontario. Oh, but I'm okay. from Ontario originally, and I never used that before. I don't know why, but maybe it was just more advanced for me. Oh, isn't that interesting? I, I'm very <laughs> curious about that. And, and the funniest way I've heard it expressed so far was somebody who, who wanted to get uh, two half quarters. Oh. <laughs> like, why not just ask for a quarter? <laughs> I know. It's so strange. But it is. It is very strange. <laughs> it's like any other language, right? There's like different dialects and different, yeah. you know, all over the world. So That's what makes us, it's what makes us Canadian, the nuance of the yeah. language across the country. That's true. Yeah, for sure. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for having a discussion with me, Sarah. I really appreciate your time. All the best of luck to you with Spirit Leaf and Vernon. And any final words for listeners on the Cannabis Podcast? Just that we're now open and we're located at 102 2500 53rd Avenue in Vernon. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sarah, and uh, you enjoy the rest of your day. You're welcome. Thanks, Gary. THC, CBD, terpene profiles, what's in me? Oh, please explain to me. Go to the corner. Go to the corner. Oh, yeah. Go to the corner. Please explain this stuff to me. And we have a really exciting cultivar corner for you this episode because we decided to experiment a little bit and actually went on a bit of a road trip. As mentioned earlier in the episode, we decided to take a trip up to the first provincial retail store in the Okanagan, Spirit Leaf up in Vernon. And I met one of the co-owners, Sarah, gave me a delightful tour of the store, gave me all kinds of great information and convinced me to try four different cultivars. And our first decision today is which one we're actually going to sample because they are all kind of interesting and, and a little bit different. So one of them is Great White Shark. This is from San Rafael. Of course, this is a provincial retail outlet, so they only have product from all the provided licensed producers. San Rafael, Great White Shark. This has interesting part about this one was CBD of 13.25% and THC of 6.89%. That's one of our options today. The next is Meridian, which is considered to be one of their higher end cannabis. This is a sativa from Up Cannabis. And this was about uh, $15.99 for a gram for this. So one of their premium buds, as they call it. The Great White Shark, what was that? That was 
for that, I believe. Let me actually, I can, I can pull out my receipt and actually give you the exact details on that. And yes, Great White Shark was eleven ninety nine. I'm correct on that. And Meridian, uh, sorry, it was fourteen ninety five a gram. And another of our choices is from one of our local companies. This in the Okanagan THC Biomed. Drive by their facility all the time. And this is a, considered a budget brand, and this is West Coast Dream, a local cannabis. We're going to provide West Coast Dream. That was twenty five ninety nine for an eighth. And she also convinced me to revisit our friends at Broken Coast. And I love Broken Coast line, small batch, high grade. And Sarah convinced me to try Broken Coast Keats. And that, again, is one of their premium buds for an eighth. This was forty one ninety nine. Definitely higher price than we're getting on the street but wanted to try it for the fact that I really do like Broken Coast. First decision we have to make is which one of those is going to be our cultivar for this week. I'm going to throw a dart at a table. <laughs> well, I can't roll dice. I'm just going to draw cards, I guess. And boom, 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 boom. Meridian. It's going to be Meridian. We're going to try the premium sativa flower. And let's get started with that. One of the things that I really appreciated in Spirit Leaf's retail display was the fact that they have all the terpene information for all of the strains that they currently sell. They have three different monitors where they have their menus displayed. And then at each of the particular displays, literally with the bud bars, they have the terpenes. I thought that was a great idea. So the choice for today is Up Meridian or Meridian by Up, whichever way you prefer to it. And I also want to thank, thank Sarah. She gave me all the details because I forgot to write down the chirping profiles when I was at the store, but she supplied that for me now. So let's tell you about Up Meridian. First of all, here's the package cracking. And there it is. A small little envelope is what we got here. And hopefully I'm going to be able to pop that with my opposing thumbs. That seems to be the trick to these little, uh, tiny little plastic guys using the thumbs or fulcrum point. And by golly, it worked. Oh, Oh, I like the smell of that. So here's the write-up on Meridian. This high THC strain from Up is grown indoors at Centuries Ahead Studio. It's big, fluffy, bright orange-green buds. Well, I'm not sure I would necessarily agree with big, uh, <laughs> especially considering some of the other bud. Smells really nice. Does have some orange to it, but I have to say, at least in my package, the buds are not terribly big. And do I have an idea when this was packaged? Yes, this was packaged. Okay, there you go. September 2018. So it's been in the package for a while. Still has retained a lot of the smell, which I'm pleased by. So it's big, fluffy, bright green buds, rich with trichomes and light orange and golden hairs. Pull up my magnifying glass. Take a look at those. Okay, yeah, I can see some of those. And terpenes. Now, terpinoline which is also found in parsnip and terpinoline. Uh, that was one of the terpenes we talked about in our last episode when we reviewed all the various terpenes. Also limonene and beta-pinene. That's partly what creates Meridian's unique bitter meets sour aroma. And I can sense that it bitter kind of does meet sour. Well, I can't wait any longer. It's time to see if Meridian has as big a hit as the fourteen ninety five per gram it implies. Now, once more, as I go to prepare this, you've heard this story before on the stuff that I uh, got from the BC Cannabis Store. And of course, these are all from licensed producers, so they're all kind of from the same bucket. And Meridian at fourteen ninety five per gram is pretty well as crumbly as many of the other stuff I found. Now, again, this was packaged in September 2018. Perhaps a newer package would be a little bit different, but... I can literally take those buds, squeeze it between my thumb and forefingers, and it doesn't require anything else. I need no grinder. I have uh, material ready to throw into the mighty, so let's do that. On a positive note, it is right on weight. 1.0 grams exactly, and I always like to weigh everything I get just to make sure I am getting full value. So kudos to the fact that it is one gram in weight, but that also highlighted the fact that despite the description, uh, there's not a single bit big butt <laughs> in this Meridian that I had picked up. It is all almost crumble. And 
making that ready for the vaporizer is not very difficult. And I guess the nice thing about loading up the vaporizer from the scale is that I can tell how much I put in. So I actually have a 0.2 of a gram that has been loaded into the bowl of my Mighty, and my Mighty is now in the process of warming up. Or maybe I just shut it off. Oh, there it is. And this is Meridian from Up. Kind of a little of the pinene, some of the limonene. Nice taste. Perhaps not as flavorful as I was hoping for, for a premium bud. And again, you can't really blame the retailers. It's the licensed producers that are producing this and delivering it to all the various retailers. And of course, more importantly than anything, is it giving me the buzz that I expect to get out of a 1495 a gram bud? Three hits on it so far. Starting to get a little of my happy eyes, which any listener to this podcast knows is one of my magic ingredients for realizing that I have achieved nirvana, shall we say. I'm feeling a bit of a happier note, as at this point, some of that euphoria is overtaking me now, and the feeling's a good one so far, so I like the buzz. Still very disappointed with the fact that there is not a single big bud within this packaging, and of course, one gram would have been a really nice big bud if, if they had wrapped that up, but maybe it's because it was done in September 2018. Didn't last that long. It doesn't taste dirty. It doesn't taste really musty. So I'm pleased by that. They managed to retain some of the flavor profile in smoking it, although it is still <laughs> really dry. I'm just looking at it in my scale. and <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look very big buddy anyways. Not sure if Meridian from Up gets a passing grade or not. I'm, as I say, I'm getting a pretty good buzz off of it. The happy eyes are here. The euphoria is definitely there. Perhaps you hear me speaking a little faster than I was before, simply because I'm now a little higher than I was before. So there is some effect in it. Uh, time will tell whether there's a bit of a creep where it kind of kicks into another level later on. We'll see as the podcast develops. But Meridian by Up from Spirit Leaf in Vernon, our first foray into the retail cannabis market in the Okanagan. And I'd say it was kind of a 50-50 mix of success. Really enjoyed the store, really enjoyed meeting Sarah, one of the owners of the store. But as with all retail outlets across our country, there's still a problem with some of the products being produced by the various licensed producers. And that's my report on Meridian by Up. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. This is the Cannabis Podcast. And now it's time for a little basic education on cannabis. Most of us, many of us, have gone through most of our life considering that there's two cannabis plants, indica and sativa. At least those of us who didn't spend any time trying to educate ourselves are of that opinion. And this was a discussion that got sparked by, again, my listener, Organic Leafy Greens, who was concerned about the Quebec government and the information they were putting on their website, in that how can we believe it when they talk about three different types of cannabis? And he wasn't referring to sativa, indica, or hybrid. He thought that there weren't three different types of cannabis. But of course, as you explore it a little bit more, and for those who have been around the industry for years, they know there are. And they are, in fact, cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and cannabis ruderalis. Now, many of you haven't heard much about ruderalis, I don't think. And I'm just going to now uh, give you a brief description of each of those and what each of them means and how they contribute to the entire cannabis world. And I want to thank the website ilovegrowingmarijuana.com. That's where I pulled this information from. And I've also put a link 
on CannabisPodcast.com. If you want to check out the information for yourself, I'm not going to dive into the whole article, just really some specifics. So let's talk about marijuana type number one, cannabis sativa. Sativa is the marijuana type that people seem to be like smoking the most. The plant grows quite large, reaching up to 15 feet in some cases. And while it's not a really thick plant, many growers like it due to how tall it can grow. The leaves are long, dainty, narrow, and considering their height potential, these are perfect for outdoor growing. We certainly found that out last year. The seeds are soft to the touch with no spots or markings on them. Do not expect this plant to flower quickly, though, because sativa takes its precious time. Even shifting the light cycles could have little effect on this, and for us, sativa, we had the end of our flower last year uh, going into November. Sativa is usually found below a latitude of 30 degrees north in places like India, Thailand, Nigeria, Mexico, and Colombia. Sativa is often dried, cooked, and consumed, while many people either vaporize or smoke this strain. It's the norm for users to use this to get high. So that's sativa. Let's now talk about cannabis indica, marijuana type number two. Cannabis indica is a more solid strain in comparison to sativa, but it does not have the height sativa achieves. Indica strains generally grow between three to six feet tall or one to two meters. It's a bushy plant with round, healthy leaves, unlike sativa. However, they both have marbled color, soft seeds. Being that indica is a short plant, this one is perfect for indoor growing. While sativa takes some time to flower, indica flowers much faster and can be influenced a lot easier by adjusting the light cycle to promote this phase. It's most commonly found above 30 degrees north in countries like Nepal, Lebanon, Morocco, and Afghanistan. The buds and flowers on indica dominant strains will usually grow very close to each other and are stickier to the touch than sativa plants. When you want to make hashish, indica is the plant you would choose due to the amount of resin it contains. And now let's go to marijuana type number three, the one that many fewer people have heard about, and that is cannabis ruderalis. You will rarely hear anyone talking about cannabis ruderalis, which is one of the primary marijuana types and has a pretty short stature growing between 20 to 25 inches in height. Similar to indica, this plant has very thick foliage. The plant is usually found growing in northern regions of the world. Ruderalis has an extremely early and fast flowering cycle because it grows farther north than any other type of marijuana and so doesn't have the luxury of a lot of time to mature before cold weather hits. Ruderalis is used to produce auto flowerers. And this was the piece of information that I gathered in this last week that really changed my world, and I think I will be moving to an auto flowering plant next year. One of the reasons you hear little about the Ruderalis strain is because it's not known to be highly psychotropic. It's used primarily as a source of additional genetic material by breeders and cultivators. That way, hybrids, which flower early, can be bred, and certain strains can be adjusted so that they will grow in more northerly climates. And then, of course, there's the hybrid marijuana types. In modern cannabis cultivation and breeding, there are a huge number of varieties available. Many years of intense mixing and hybridization have created a huge spectrum across these three primary varieties. Now, the different mixes all have different characteristics, running the gamut of possibilities relating to flowering cycles, yield, CBN to 2HC ratios, and disease resistance, among others. In general, the purpose of a hybrid plant is to combine positive characteristics from different strains together. Some key differences between indica and sativa marijuana types are the height of the plants, the length between buds, the size and shape of the leaves, the odor, the quality of the smoke, and the chemical properties themselves. In general, indica is wide and robust, while sativa is long and thin. There is lots more information on the particular site that I have listed the details. You can dive into all of those details, but I really wanted to just concentrate on the fact that there are three primary types of marijuana. And now we've discovered those together. Sativa, indica, and ruderalis. Now you know. Well, we'll have another decision to make on the next episode, which of our remaining three strains from Spirit Leaf in Vernon are going to make it to Cultivar Corner. If you'd like to give me your uh, ideas, I'd be happy to hear them. Info at CannabisPodcast.com is where you can send all of your details. So should we do West Coast Dream from THC Biomed? Should we do Keats from Broken Coast? Or should we do the CBD Great White Shark? 
from San Rafael. I'd be curious to know your opinion. Send your details and we'll make a choice. Before we get back into the story next week, I think we're going to look at another article from Leafly.com on the best nail for you to use in your dab rig. Something we haven't spoken about much, but I've started doing a little dabbing and picked up a rig when we were down in Vancouver a couple of weeks ago. So I found this great article. We'll talk about what the best type of nail for you is next week. And that about wraps it up for episode number 24 of the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio, high above the Okanagan Valley, this was the Cannabis Podcast. Podcast.